on the bank of the Snake River, where Oregon, Washington, and Idaho meet, there's a message left over a thousand years ago at a place called Buffalo Eddy, a sacred place to some. These human figures were painted into volcanic rock by people we don't know for reasons equally unknown. Petroglyphs depicting various objects can be seen on rocks throughout the American West, including some on cave walls. The oldest are believed to be 2,000 years old. Visitors, including photographers, are asked to remain in their boats, a measure that makes for some shaky video but may protect this priceless art. Early Americans left us no written record, but they did leave tangible records of their lives. While rock art endures to this day, drawings on animal hide don't endure for such time span. The carving of historical events in stone was well-developed, a well-developed skill in Mesoamerican cities. While often precise and elaborate, there's little of the personal touch seen in the renderings further north. Mayan writing is better understood since archaeologists have deciphered much of their written language, thanks to works like these in the Templo de Inscripciones in Tikal. Rock art like this jaguar doesn't need deciphering. Carvings of animals and deities are found throughout Mesoamerica. Animal figures are prevalent in the rock art found in the American Southwest. In their illustrated book, Messages on Stone, William Michael Stokes and William Lee Stokes share examples of pictographs and petroglyphs found on canyon walls and other lonely places in the western United States. Rock art of hunting scenes is only one theme found in western rock art as featured in this book. Each page features a different theme, this one focusing on animals. The themes are often apparent, but we're left wondering their purpose. Are they records of the animals found in a place? A rendering for religious purposes? Or a claiming of territory? We may never know. We can guess at a variety of purposes, but let's not forget the sheer joy and satisfaction of merely creating art. A recent discovery of Native American art occurred during the construction of Interstate 70 through Utah. Numerous petroglyphs were discovered at an ancient settlement of Clear Creek Canyon. Clear Creek Canyon contains both painted on pictographs and chiseled out petroglyphs left by people we call the Fremont. While prehistoric hunters and gatherers used this canyon, over 5,000 years ago, the Fremont culture more recently engaged in farming while producing distinctive pottery, dewclaw moccasins, and clay figurines. The state park was established in 1985 to preserve Clear Creek Canyon's treasury of rock art and archaeological sites. Visitors are invited to enjoy features like the Parade of Rock Art Trail, Canyon of Life, and the Hidden Secrets Trail. An intriguing and somewhat haunting approach to rock art is found in the book Before You Came This Way by Bird Baylor and illustrated by Tom Botti. The intrigue begins with these words. You walk down this canyon, this place of high red cliffs and turning winds and hawks that float in the far white sky, and you wonder, am I the first one ever to come this way? And you wonder, is my footprint the first one ever to touch this sand? With these words, the writer takes you on a journey 
The image is left on stone, sparking your imagination, as it certainly did his. But then you see something which tells you, no, you're not the first. Your brothers out of some long ago lost age pass this way too. You see their marks on canyon walls. Even the print of their hands is left, chipped deep in stone. The reds and yellows and blacks have been battered by a thousand winds, washed by a thousand rains. The pictures are dim now, half shadow. But you search the canyon for them, and here you see young hunters leap in the morning sun. The light still gleams on their arrows. High on a rock, someone drew tracks of all the birds he'd ever seen, and deer tracks, lion tracks, fox tracks, even a wandering path of tracks of men. Men going where? Searching for a better place for the tribe to make its home? Or for some newer hunting ground? Did pictures bring strength to the hunters? Did they bring luck? Was there some magic in the artist's hand? Of course, there's much more to this work than I've shared in this review. Thanks to the questioning mind of the writer and the great skill of the illustrator, you'll enjoy all the wonder that comes from pondering these messages left on stone so long ago. The stone that holds this art is found in abundance in the southwest region of the United States. Much of it is pecked into a feature called desert varnish, a thin dark coating on a lighter colored rock. This geographic feature is found here along the Colorado River at Moab, Utah. These human figures were chipped into the rock at Mesa Verde National Park. New Mexico holds rock art as well. At Bandelier National Monument, the ruins of an ancient Pueblo contain messages left on stone. The reconstructed Kiva is for visitors, stretched out along a canyon. The ruins of former dwellings, now abandoned, bring many questions to mind. A sense of mystery envelops this place. Mystery deepened by the rock art found here. At Newspaper Rock, multiple generations have literally left their mark on the rock. These human figures are believed to be the oldest rock art here. The hourglass shape of the human body is a common feature in rock art in this region. As time and history went on, Newer figures were added to newspaper rock. We see wagon wheels and riders mounted on horses, perhaps an attempt by artists to grasp, or at least record, the rapid changes to his world. But then, Native American life has always been about adapting to changes. I look at newspaper rock and I wonder, what future conditions will be recorded on rock? If not here, where?